Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and part 4A of our astrophotography pre-install series where I take another look at Stellarium. In the initial Stellarium video I showed you how to set it up to uh, be able to communicate with your imaging software and to control your mount if you desire to do it that way. But in this one we're going to look at making Stellarium more functional for you for planning and looking at what you're going to be capturing by setting it up to work with your cameras and telescopes. So here we go. So here we are in Stellarium and don't worry too much about the lines on my screen. Uh, the green lines the meridian, the blue lines circumpolar stars for me and the red line is my view area. Uh, below the red line I can't see because I've got buildings and trees in the way and above it is what I can see. And I probably need to adjust that later on because the trees have a habit of growing. Now to set up your camera and telescope for viewing your objects in Stellarium you need to use the Oculus plugin and by default that's installed and set up to run when you install uh, Stellarium to begin with and that's this box up in the right hand corner here uh, where you've got four buttons you can press on uh, the first one is the Oculus view and I'm not going to go much into this because this is dealing with using eyepieces I'll probably have to do something in the near future on it because of the popularity of people using phones through an eyepiece but for this video I'm not going to go much into it and what happens when you click on it you get a selection area where you can choose the particular eyepiece you want to use um, so you can see what you're going to get and the telescope you're using with it as well and if you're using anything like a uh, Barlow or whatever you can also select that there but that's the eyepiece one the second one it gives you pops up in this one is the crosshairs which just gives you a crosshairs in the eyepiece so that's that one the next one is the one you'll mostly use uh, which is your image sensor frame and this covers your oh, I need to get out onto something darker I think I'll just zoom out a bit uh, and this covers your camera sensors uh, whichever camera you're using um, you can rotate the image um, by selecting what you want I'll go into that a little bit later that oops, oops, reset takes me back in um, your telescope and again your Barlow or whatever uh, that's the one you'll use the most the next one is just if you've got a Telrad, uh, it just gives you a Telrad screen and you can set up what you see on that um, in the settings, which is what the very next one is. Uh, this is your configuration, this little spanner, and that's where we need to go in to set things up. So on the first page is just a bit of information on uh, setting it up in general overview. And if you have a Telrad, um, you can set up the field of vision, etc, etc, etc in there. But um, not much to do there. You don't really need to do anything there at all. Eyepieces, that is exactly as it says. Eyepieces, um, like I said, I'm not going into this at the moment, but I probably will in a, in a some time in the future, simply because of the popularity of uh, cameras from phones being used through eyepieces. Uh, lenses isn't lenses um, this is one part we do need to do something with what this actually is is anything that affects the focal length of your um, scope goes in here so barlows reducers teleconverters etc that you might be using and it's quite simple to use uh, you go to if you want to add something you go to add okay so I'm going to add my reducer which is a uh, 0 0.8 reducer oops I meant to cover that up X 0 0.8 reducer and then you just set in how much it does so mine's 0 0.8 so 0 0.8 and it's done and that's all you need to do now I'm going to move that up my list okay um, Stellarium numbers your objects your hardware by where it is in the in the list uh, the top position is position zero then one two three four five six however many you've got so that's uh, how you get in there and that's all there is to adding a barlow or a reducer you just need to name it something click add name it something and then how much it changes your field of view or your focal length so that's that there the sensor is, like it says, that's your camera sensor. 
Okay, I've added my ones I actually use at the moment are already in there, but uh, I need to add one more. So I'm going to go add and simply give it a name. This is my EOS 1100D. Uh, just to keep with the way it is. When you first open this up, you'll have a whole pile of them listed there by default. Um, so whether you delete what you've got or change them, it's up to you. Uh, the 1100D isn't in that list. Oh, I've gone to and deleted all the ones I don't use. So the only information you really need is your uh, pixel sizes for your um, width and height. So mine for this one is 4272 in width and the height is, where are we, 2848. That's there. And then the actual chip size, which is 22.2 and the chip height is 14.7. And that's really all you need to do in here. Um, if you have an off-access guider, you need to enter the appropriate information here. And that gives you a circle around your camera center, um, which will show where the off-access guider is pointing to. I don't use one anymore, simply because I found it too difficult to work with with my uh, filter wheel and uh, DSLR. They're very hard to get right for those. So I leave that off for now. I may get another one in the future, but at the moment I'm quite happy with uh, just using an actual guide scope. So you can change your positions of where these are. Um, I'm going to move this one up to the second one. Now if you're using a CCD camera like my ASI 294mm Pro here, I, it can run in a bin 1 or bin 2 mode. I just put the binning here. But it's really not necessary if you don't want to, simply because it still shows you the same size for your view on it. Um, but that's up to you. So there we go. That's how you set up a sensor or camera on it. Um, as long as you've got the details you need here, you're right to go. Now the telescope is again what it says. It's your actual telescope. Whether it be an actual telescope or a camera lens, you can set it up in here. And as you see, it's quite simple. A name again, uh, the focal length and the diameter. That's all you really need. When you set on a new one, these three boxes will all be checked. I suggest unchecking them, um, despite the fact that generally you're probably going to be on an equatorial mount. Um, I prefer turning that on and off manually, which you can do down the bottom. So I just leave it as it is. So this time I'm going to add a camera lens, my 300mm f4. So again, add and just to keep it all together, photo lens. 300mm uh, f4 so I need to put in the focal length which is 300 uh, the diameter on this one it's 75 now if you don't know the diameter of it all it is is simply dividing the focal length by the f-stop number um, and that's the same with a uh, zoom lens as well if you only partly zoomed in. If it's a fixed uh, f-stop camera, like an f2.8 f2 uh, 70 to 200, if you've got one of them, then it's whatever focal length you'll choose divided by the point uh, by the 2.8. If you're using one that varies the uh, aperture depending on the focal length, then you'll need to figure out exactly what that is. And as I said, these are automatically checked. I turn them all off and I'll move that one up because that's probably my second most popular used one and that's it you're done um, now that I've done that I can close that one down so if I click on this one up here for the image sensor I now get I've done it again <laughs> um, whenever you change one of these settings here it will zoom back in again so I've got my 294 mm Pro um, oh, let's go somewhere else. Hold F. Um, let's see. 
uh, M42. There you go. We'll go over to there. That's better. So I've got the 294mm Pro. As you see, it's sensor number zero. It gives you your dim dimensions, any binning you have, uh, your X and Y scale in pixels, and if you want to rotate it. I'll show you that one in a second. I'll leave it on my normal telescope, but I'm going to put my 0.8 reducer on it. And as you see, that's okay, but it, I'd like to rotate this a bit so I can rotate it around to get the proper field of view I like. Yeah, that'd be a better field of view. Um, but that's just what you have. I might change the camera too, go to the 1100D. And you've got to change your rotation for any one you're using. Uh, that's probably a good one there. Um, and it remembers the rotation for that particular camera. Uh, so if I go back to my 294, so it's remembered the rotation. And to reset the rotation, simply zero. But it remembers it between sessions and it remembers what one you've got selected between sessions as well so that's it there and that's all you need now you have that uh, it makes it easier to plan your images to frame them properly uh, to see what you want to do uh, what equipment you want to use there you go nice photo lens for a wider field um, and that's it nothing else to say uh, it wouldn't have a reducer on it but I may go the other way and put the teleconverter on it. Uh, might be a little bit more, 75 degrees. But there you go, that's how it works. So now it's set up, it makes it easier to, to frame your images, to plan a session ahead uh, so you can get in and do it. Because if you push F5, it brings up your time and date and that way you can change the dates and the times when you're going to be looking at it. So that's all there is to it. And I'll finish this video now. Any questions, post it in the comments. Take care everyone and I hope you all have clear skies. Bye for now.